Hello everybody and welcome to the 15th episode of the Idle Game Maker tutorial series and today we're diving into the wonderful world of text effects which can really elevate the visual elements of your game. So first things first, there are two types of text effects in Idle Game Maker and those are tags and embeds. Tags are like magic spells for your text and they work their charm in various areas of your game such as in descriptions, logs, the text and toast property as well as footers and headers and their primary purpose is to make your text look super fancy and eye-catching. Now let's take a look at examples provided here. You can use tags to change text color, style, you can use them to create dotted lists or new lines and they are a fantastic way to make your game's interface more appealing and user-friendly. Now the second type of text effects, embeds, allow you to embed dynamic mathematical expressions using variables and descriptions, the text and toast property, as well as footers and headers. And embeds are insanely useful because with them you can create dynamic text that updates in real time based on in-game variables. Imagine having health points or in-game currency display directly in your descriptions. With embeds, it's possible. First, let's take a look at what tags you can use in your game with this table that I have made. Now, one important thing to mention is that tags need to be encased inside angled brackets, as can be seen here. And first up, we have the B tag, which makes the text after it bold. And if you only want a certain part of your text to be bold, you can use the closing tag slash B to end the styling process. Then we have the I tag, which styles the text after it to be slanted and as with the B tag you can use the closing tag slash I to end the styling process and the same applies for all the following tags as well. Next up we have the U tag which underlines the text after it as can be seen here. Then we have the T tag which styles the text as a title and there is also the Q tag which styles the text as a quote on the bottom right of the tooltip and we can see an example of this happening right here. Then we have a very interesting color tag which makes the text after it colored using hexadecimal color codes and we will take a look very soon at how we can find the hexadecimal color code of any colors that we like. Next up we have three formatting tags and those are the slash tag which produces a new line or a line break, then the double slash tag which produces a new paragraph and the dot tag which organizes the text after it into a dotted list item on a new line. Okay so now that we know which tags we can use let's do a small exercise using these tags in a game so that we can more fully understand them. Alright, so here we have two buildings called before and after and our task is to style the text inside this description using tags and our end result should be this right here. Now with our text reset we can begin styling it. So first of all let's make each sentence be on a new line so that it's more organized. And the way we do this is actually very simple, let's just add the slash tag after each sentence in our description. Let's also just copy and paste it after each sentence, so right here, in here, here here as well, this in here and that should be pretty much it. So let's save our changes and see how it looks now. Okay, so now we can see that each one of our sentences is organized on a new line and now we can style our text even further. Okay, so first things first, this text is asking us to make it bold. So let's use the B tag, make it bold and let's use the slash B closing tag to end the styling process at the end of the sentence. This text is asking us to make it slanted. So let's use the I tag and let's use the closing I tag. Once again, stop the styling process. Here we just use the U tag, here we use the T tag. Now when we want to make color text we need to use the color tag, however for this we need the hexadecimal color code of the color red. And the way we do this is actually just by looking up hex color picker and here you can pick any shade of any color you want. So we need to pick red so let's choose some kind of shade of red, I like this one. And here we can see the hexadecimal color code of that color. So let's just copy this color right here and paste it into our color tag. So right in here, there we go. And then let's end the coloring process by using the closing tag as well. This next part is simpler. We just use the dot tag to make this sentence part of a dotted list. But before continuing any further, let's actually check our results. So let's save our changes and check how our game looks. All right, and here we can see the results of what we have done so far, and it looks pretty much how we expect it to. However, there is a gap after the title, and the reason for this is because the slash T closing tag actually automatically creates a new line. So a simple way for us to fix this would be to remove this slash tag right here, which is right after the slash T closing tag. So let's just remove this and save our changes. And after we hit refresh, our gap should be gone. 
Yep, there we go, it's gone. Now our next sentence needs to be styled in multiple ways at once. And the sentence is asking us to make it bold, slanted and colored green all at the same time. And the way we do this is actually pretty simple. We just add the B tag, then the I tag, and then the color tag with the green hexadecimal color code. So let's search up some kind of green shade. I like this one and let's copy and paste it into here. Now, when using multiple tags at the same time like this, it is good practice to close them in the order that they have been created. Otherwise, it can sometimes produce unexpected results. So let's just use the slash B closing tag first, since we first created the B tag, as can be seen right here. Then let's use the slash I closing tag, since we created the I tag second, and then the color closing tag since we created our color tag last. All right, so now let's save our changes and let's hit refresh. So we can see that our text is bold, slanted and colored green all at the same time. All right, now the last thing left to do is to make this next sentence a quote. So we just use the Q tag and we don't even need a closing tag because this is the last sentence in our description. So let's save our changes and this should be our final result. Yep, so we can see that now there is a quote on the bottom right of our tooltip. Okay, and with that exercise finished, hopefully you now fully understand tags and how to use them. Now let's take a look at the next text effect, embeds. So as mentioned previously, Embeds are used to display dynamically changing values in descriptions, logs, and the text and toast property as well as headers and footers. And for this, you use square brackets. So here's how embeds work. You enclose a mathematical expression or variable within square brackets like this. This will then display the result of that expression in real time. Next up, let's take a look at some practical uses for embeds. So in this example right here, we have a button within its description to display for how many times it has been clicked. Notes also that you can style embeds with tags as well. Here we have our embed, and in this case, we embedded a variable inside a description. In the next example, we have a resource which shows the result of a simple math expression multiplied by the amount of gold that you have. So here we have our embedded expression inside of a description which returns the result of that expression multiplied by the amount of that resource. So here we can see that we are multiplying that expression by the amount of the gold resource. However, there is an important thing that you need to be aware of when embedding expressions. You need to make sure that expressions are entirely encased in brackets when using brackets inside of embeds, because not doing so will otherwise return an error. And what I mean by this is that here we can see we are using brackets because we want this arithmetic expression to be calculated first. So in this case our entire calculation needs to be inside an extra pair of brackets which can be seen right here. If you didn't add these brackets right here, the engine would throw an error when you would try to load the game. And in our first example here, we didn't need to use brackets because we weren't using brackets anyways. This is unfortunately a peculiar bug with Idle Game Maker, so make sure you don't forget about this. Keep in mind that these few examples are really only the bare minimum of the things you can do with embeds. You could, for example, display a building's production information as well. However, that's slightly lengthier to do and I'll probably make a video on that in the future. In the meantime, however, you can experiment yourself on how you could use embeds and variables taught in episode 13 to your advantage in order to accomplish this. Next up let's take a look at some selectors which can only be used with embeds. So first we have this weird selector right here and what it does is it shows the specified text in here if the specified things amount is different than one. And this selector is very useful if you want your embeds to be grammatically correct. And we'll take a look at an example of this in just a second. Next we have the end selector which displays the name of the specified thing and last but not least we have the p selector which displays the plural name of the specified thing one more important thing that i sh actually should have mentioned already in the variables episode of this series is that you can use the this keyword to refer to the thing the keyword is used with and this can also be used as a variable which returns the thing's amount so keep in mind that this actually can be used throughout your entire source file now let's take a look at some examples so this first example here demonstrates the primary use of the first embed specific selector it ensures ensures grammatical correctness by displaying gem when the gem count is 1 and gems with an added s for gem counts different than 1, avoiding the incorrect you have 1 gems. The second example simply displays the name of the thing the embed is attached to since we are using the this keyword and the third example does the same thing except it refers to the plural form of the name. The final aspect of embeds to note is conditional usage. Simply set a condition at the start of an embed then separate text for true and false values using 
bar symbols as can be seen here. This example will display as you do know the secrets of Kung Fu if you own the Kung Fu upgrade, otherwise it would display you do not know the secrets of Kung Fu if you don't own the Kung Fu upgrade. It's also good practice to encase embed conditions in brackets. Now, so let's say in our game we want the description of coin trees to display if we own an even or odd amount of them. So inside of this conditional embed we can use other embeds to display the amount of coin trees as well, which can be seen right here. And we can use tags as well, which can be seen here. Now let's just mention some final tips for text effects in general. So remember that text can use multiple tags as was shown in our exercise and remember to use closing tags as well. Also note that you can use conditional embeds inside conditional embeds for more complex text effects. However, I didn't mention those in the video since it's already getting pretty long, but it works in pretty much the way you'd expect it to work. Also remember that you cannot use text effects and names of things. If you want the name of a thing to be stylized, use the text property instead. And last but not least, note that text effects can also be used in the description of your game. Alright, and with text effects covered, let's now move on to your optional challenge. So your tasks for this challenge are to enhance our game's descriptions using what you have learned about text effects. And if you don't feel like styling text your own way, you can just follow this simple template. So pause the video, give the challenge a go and let me know how it went in the comments. Alright, so hopefully you gave that a go and now I will show you how I would style the descriptions of our game. So let's begin. So in our game, our descriptions are looking really, really bland. And the first thing I would change is the description of our upgrade. And I think that for the style of our game, having descriptions similar to Cookie Clicker, as we can see here, would work very nicely for our game. So let's get into Pastebin and find our upgrade and we can begin styling the description. Now the first thing I would do is reformat this remark about the upgrade as a quote. So let's just copy this and then delete it and then add it in our description as a quote. So there we go. Now let's save our changes and see how it looks. All right, I think that looks great. Now let's improve the description even more. All right, and so that our description is even more similar to the cookie clicker style, I will change the effect or the description to say this instead. So metal detectors are twice as efficient. And let's also make the word twice bold so that it catches the player's eye. So let's save our changes and let's see how it looks. All right, and I think that looks great. However, one thing that I would probably change is make this a dotted list item. So let's go back into our description and let's add the dot tag in here. So let's save our changes once again, hit refresh. And yeah, we can see that our description is now looking a lot nicer than it was before. Next up, let's make the descriptions of our buildings a lot nicer as well. So let's get back into paste bin and inside of our metal detectors, Let's add two new lines, the bold tag and the color tag. And I actually want to write the word effects, right? And have it be bold and colored orange. And I actually already went to my hex color picker and found a color that I like. So let's just copy this color right here and paste it into our color tag. And now let's end the styling process with slash B and closing tag for color as well. Next up, let's use the dot tag so that we can list all of the effects of this building in order. So this building doesn't really have that many special effects. So let's just have it say produces one coin per second. And let's make the number bold so that it once again catches the player's eye. So let's save our changes and let's see how our building looks now. All right, now we can see that our building's description looks a lot nicer. However, there is one more thing that I'd probably like to change and it's that the first sentence is actually not very lined up. And the way we fix this is just by adding the slash tag in here so that it's on a new line. And there we go. Now let's just do the same thing for the other buildings in our game. So let's first begin by adding the slash tag at the beginning of our description so that the text then lines up. Next up, let's just copy and paste this template that I have already made in here. However, let's change this here. So it produces four coins per second since this is the next building. And let's add a new line or a new dotted list item and we can have it say plus 0.1 production metal detectors per con artist owned. And we can make this number bold and metal detectors bold as well, as well as con artist owned or well con artist. And then let's save our changes and let's see how it looks. All right, so I'm very happy with this. 
Now let's just do the coin trees. Okay, so one thing I want to change here is that we'll probably make this as a quote. But first, let's add a new line at the beginning, as with everything. And then let's add a quote, which contains the text that we have deleted. So let's also put it in quotes. Next up, let's once again copy our template, so here, and put it inside here. And let's have this say produces 10 coins per second. Next up, I actually want to make this description a little more interesting than the other ones by adding a passive effect here, which is that when you own an even number of these coin trees, they produce double the amount. However, let's make this passive text yellow so that it looks a lot nicer. Let's make it this kind of color and let's just copy and paste our color tag in here and let's also make this bold so like this then let's end styling processes with the closing tags and let's have the passive effect be reduces double coins if you own an even amount of coin trees let's make even bold and just to make it even more interesting let's add a conditional embed here which displays whether the boost is on or off. So the way we do this is just by adding a new line and then let's just have it say boost status. Now let's add our conditional embed. So if the amount of coin trees divided by two returns a remainder of zero, we say on or off if it's not. Let's also make this text here a lot cooler as well. So let's make on green and bold and off red and bold. So let's first search up some kind of green color. There we go. And let's copy and paste that color in here and end the coloring process. Then let's make it bold as well, like this. Next up, let's do the same thing for off, but with the color red. I kind of like this one. Let's first make it bold. Then let's make it the color red. Then let's and the styling processes once again. There we go, and let's now save our changes and see how it looks. Hopefully this should look pretty, pretty cool. All right, it appears I have actually messed something up and I believe I didn't add a slash tag in here. So let's just add the slash tag here. Or wait, no, sorry, uh, so the slash tag right here. There we go. So now let's save our changes and it should hopefully look flawless now. All right, then we can see that it displays the passive effect of this building and it also displays how much it produces at a base amount and it also tells you if this boost is on or off based on the amount of your coin trees so let's now have an odd amount of coin trees and we see that it says boost status is off then on again then off again and then on again so this is very very cool all right and with that this will be the end of this episode congratulations on making it this far and thank you for sticking with me for this long this episode is special because by now the series has covered pretty much all the basics of Idle Game Maker at a surface level. Throughout the next episode, we'll mainly just be adding more interesting features to our game, and I'll be teaching you some more advanced techniques as well. So, thank you very much for watching. I hope you found this tutorial useful, and if you really enjoy what I do here and wish to support me, check out my Patreon, which is linked in the description. For only $2 a month, your name can be included in the outro of my videos. But with that said, once again, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.